Today we are talking about data visualization and I'm going to walk you through two things. Firstly, I'm going to walk you through the idea of telling a story with your data and I'm going to use a couple of graphics that I've put together on the screen at the moment to, to teach you that. And then secondly, I'm going to talk you through how it is that you choose between different visualization options given the kind of data that you've got, right? So exciting stuff, don't go away, stick with me, shaka. Now what you want to do with your data is you want to tell a story, right? The human brain is very good at pattern recognition. So you want to put a pattern in front of a person's eyes, in front of those brains, and let them see the story that you're trying to tell, okay? So let's get into that right now. Let's look at this graphic, top left-hand corner. This is weight of chickens by feed group. So right, we've got a whole, we've got a whole lot of chickens. We've divided them into cohorts and given them different food to eat, right? And each of the chickens is weighed and we can see the weight of the chicken is the x-axis over here. The weight of the chicken is a small dot for each chicken and the average for that group is the big dot. And this line in the middle is the average for the entire group, for everybody, all, all the chickens all put together. This is their average weight. So we can see immediately that these three groups of chickens, right, that were fed this food over here, they are all above average in terms of their weight. And we can and we can see with the with the big thick line how far above average each of them are. We can see which of that, which which are the sort of extremes. We can also see that these three here are below average, and that this one down here that was given horse beans has done worst of all in terms of the average weight of those chickens. Very interesting. The data jumps off the page. You know exactly what's being communicated. It's nice and clean and it's beautiful. In this plot here, what I've done is I've looked at temperature in 2016 for each month. Within each month, I've got a density plot that represents the distribution of temperatures within that month. But then that density plot is repeated month on month and we can see as the year progresses how within each month, each progressive month, the distribution of temperatures in that month is shifting over into a slightly more warmer and warmer as we go into summer and then cooler and cooler as we go into winter. Again, it tells a story, it's very clear, it jumps off the page, it's beautiful. In this graphic at the bottom, this whole thing at the bottom is really one plot, right? And what it's looking at is looking at a couple of things. It's looking at five variables all in one graphic. That's what's beautiful about this, right? What are the five variables we're looking at? On the x-axis, GDP per capita. Y-axis, life expectancy. All of this is disaggregated between Africa and Europe. That's a categorical variable. And each data point, right, which each of them is a country within each continent, is a different color depending on the year, and it's a different size depending on the size of the population, right? So we're looking at five different variables in one graphic, which is really beautiful. Okay, and, and immediately your eyes can see the pattern that's emerging, right? We can see that in terms of increases in GDP per capita, they translate into quite steep increases in life expectancy in Africa, but less so in Europe, right? Interesting, jumps off the page, very easy to see what the pattern is. Okay, now I want us to think through how we would represent data given different combinations of variables and what are the principles and what are the different geometries we might use. And it's not that complicated. We're gonna look at a data set that I've got in R over here. It's built into R. And if you wanna know more about the codes, I've got a cheat sheet that I'm gonna tell you about right at the end. You can download that cheat sheet. It's got all of the code that I use within R to produce any of the graphics that are produced in this video, right? So. Star Wars is a data set that's built into R. You've got the data on your computer if you're using R at all, and it's great for practicing. And what we've got is we've got all the Star Wars characters, Luke Skywalker, blah, 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 and then different variables representing different characteristics of the characters, right? And we're going to look at combinations of numeric and categorical variables and try and determine what are the graphical possibilities, what are the, what are the options in terms of visualizing that those th th that data, right? Um, so let's start off. That this you can see here. That's the Star Wars data. Let's start off with, and I'm just going to run this a single numeric data set. Okay, we're going to start off with a single numeric variable. In this case, height. Right. So for each of the Star Wars characters, we've got their height, and it's just the height variable by itself. We're going to look at right now. If you're looking at a single numeric variable, most commonly we would represent that with a histogram. A histogram, basically you have along the number line, you create bins and you count up the number of observations that occur within any of that, any of those bins and, the, and that number, that count represents the height of the column at that point. And you, rep, and you basically get the shape of the histogram, the shape of the data. You can see that it's pretty much normally distributed in this particular case. You can do the same thing with a density plot. Now, a density plot isn't a count, but it's rather the probability of get, seeing an observation uh, given any particular point along that number line. It's the same, and you can see that these shapes are very similar as you would expect. A box plot, well, a box plot really, it represents the distribution of, of the data. And what we've got is the box itself, right? 
The box itself is 50% of your observations. 50% of your data lives within the box. The middle line, the big thick line, that's the median, right? That's the set, that's the, your center, your, your middlemost value. Uh, these two whiskers on either side of the box, right? They go out 1.5 times the interquartile range. So this box in the middle with 50% of the data, that's the interquartile range. 1.5 times the interquartile range gives you your, your whiskers. And everything after that is called an outlier, right? Now, you can see right on the left-hand side of the outlier here, there's a couple of observations. That's interesting. Well, a nice way to visualize some of the shape of this data, like, the, you know, we've just got a very square box here. It's not telling us much about how that data is distributed. A violin plot does a very similar thing, but it gives us more of a sense of the actual shape. Right, and you can see where there's a lot of observations over there. In the outliers, you can kind of see there's a little bump in the violin plot over there, right? And the violin plot and the density plot often become more useful when we're looking at at numeric variables that have been disaggregated by a categorical variable. So we're gonna see more of that later on in this video. Okay, if you've got one or more categorical variable, right, so categorical variable, categories, eye color, green, red, blue, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, you can use a bar plot if there's just, if you're just dealing with one categorical variable, right? In this case, we've got eye color, black, blue, brown, and yellow. You count the number of observations Right in this data set, you count the number of observations. People with black hair or eye, black eyes, blue eyes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That translates into the size of the bar, and voila, we've got a bar chart. Now, just just to remind you, because people often get confused between a bar chart and a histogram. Histogram is done with numeric variables, where you have to put the numeric variables, the observations, into bins, into buckets, and then count them up. In the case of a categorical variable, each observation falls neatly into a, a in, into a particular category, and you can count that category up. People either have black, blue, brown, or yellow eyes. Sometimes there's missing data, we call that not available, and you might have a bar for not available, or you just move that out of the way completely, right? If you add a second categorical variable into play, right, so we've got, we've got eye color, but we might want to also represent gender. Right, and we can do that in three ways. There's more, but three main ways. And that is we can take our, this, this, this exact bar, these exact bar plots, and within each bar plot, we can, we can divide it up by gender in terms of color. Right, so we can see that uh, blue is masculine, gray or peach over there is feminine, and we can see the sort of relative proportion of each of them. You can do the same thing with uh, by, by grouping them, so you have the bars next to each other instead of on top of each other, and then you can have them as a proportion or a percentage, right, where they all stack up either to one or 100, and you can see the relative proportion of each of those genders across the different bars. Okay, got it? Of course you do, super duper easy. Let's keep going, Boyashaka. Now what we've just spoken about is two categorical variables, right? So we had eye color, we had gender, but now we've added in height, and you can see we've done something very different here. And that is once you start introducing a numeric variable, right, in this case, one numeric variable and two categorical variables, very often what you would want to do is you'd want the geometry to be driven by the numeric variable and you use the categorical variables to divide up the graph, to disaggregate it so that you can see things kind of separated out. Okay, so that's, and we've done that in two ways here, right? So in the first instance, we've just taken our, our numeric variable, in this case, height, we've got some density plots and some, and, and we've got some uh, box plots and we've just divided, we've just sucked out the data into two separate groups and we've drawn that graph twice. And that's the nice thing about density plots, you make them a little bit transparent and you can layer them one on top of each other and you can sort of see what their relative shapes might look like. And you can put them next to each other in the case of, of box plots and you can see sort of what the relative distribution might look like. Um, so that's quite nice, we've disaggregated the da data, that we've disaggregated the numeric data, we've, divide, we've, we've put them into two groups uh, by using a categorical variable. We can do that once again. So if you look at the graphs on the right hand side, in the first instance, we've continued to disaggregate the data in the graphics by the by gender. But then we've taken brown and uh, black, brown and black, and I think this is eye color once again. Yes, is it? Is it eye color? Yes, it's eye color. And we've put them into two facets. We've faceted it out. So we've we've once again disaggregated it even further. And we've said just with respect to black, uh, let's draw a little graph over here, which is just the, the, the feminine people, the feminine characters in Star Wars that have got black eyes, that's this, this is the blue ones, and et cetera, et cetera. Right, can, so can you see how you, you use the categorical variables to disaggregate, disaggregate the data and, and you can facet them out. Okay, let's keep going. 
Okay, and here I'm gonna illustrate two things. Firstly, just two numeric variables, very easy to, to, to illustrate them and you'll be you'll be familiar with a scatter plot, right? Two numeric variables, one on the x-axis, one on the y-axis, super duper easy. In this case, what I've done is I've added in a smooth linear model so you can sort of see where things are going and a, a standard error around that you don't have to. But the point is we can see that there's a nice trend here. There's a nice kind of relationship between these two variables, super easy. Okay, if we were to add in one categorical variable, right? We would take each of these data points and we might say we'd like them to be colored differently depending on the gender, or in this case, the sex of a partic that particular character, right? And we've done that on, over here on the right, and we've got them all still in one graph, but then we can further disaggregate that if we wanted to and put them into two separate, two separate facets. You could, of course, use a second categorical variable, right? Um, and and uh, you, you know you can you can carry on you can disaggregate things in, in multiple different ways but the point that I'm making here similar to the last time is that you represent in this case two numeric variables and you start disaggregating them in terms of the way you visualize them using categorical variables okay you got it boom shakalaka let's keep going just to circle back to the start of visualization that we started with here you've got four separate numeric variables one categorical variable all built into one graphic absolutely beautiful if you want to download the cheat sheet, so everything that I've spoken about is in one cheat sheet, including the R code, incidentally, that I used to produce all of these graphics, click on the link that's on the screen at the moment or click in the description below. That'll take you to a place you can download the cheat sheet. You're going to love it. If you'd like to learn how to use R or if you'd like to do a detailed course on data visualization using R, then go to learnmore365.com. I've got a course there. You're going to love that too. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Click on the bell notification if you want notification of future videos. Stay well, don't do drugs, always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.